bowing to enormous pressure to step down. Andrew Cuomo is resigning his position as the governor of New York. In 14 days, Lieutenant Governor Kathy Hochul will become the next governor of New York. The governor said that he was not guilty. He apologized to all the women who he offended. He says this is a politically motivated issue, but he says he is unable in this current environment to properly clear his name. Marsha Kramer joining us now. Marsha, obviously you've been following this from the very beginning. Are, are you shocked that he finally bit the bullet and, and stepped down? Well, I'm not shocked because I think it was the only way that he could deal with it. I've been hearing over the weekend that his lawyers had begged him to resign, telling him that to face an impeachment proceeding was just not something he could do. I mean, think about what would happen. Impeachment would have dealt with not only the sexual harassment, but also the book deal, the um, fact that some of his relatives got preferential treatment and getting shots, and most importantly, the deaths at nursing homes. And think what would have happened if there had been a parade of people who lost loved ones who would testify about their loved ones at an impeachment hearing. And I think that you take the whole sum of the total, and he did, he did the only option, it was the only option that he had. There is still a possibility of hearings, the, uh, the governor calling it bias, calling it lack of fairness when it came to that report. What do you expect we might see from state government? Well, I think that probably state government is going to have to regroup. I don't think at this point they're going to be able to say, yes, we're going to have a hearing. No, we're not going to have a hearing. Because I think on some levels, people in state government in Albany want to he heave a sigh of relief yeah. that they don't have to put the state through this, that they don't have to have this parade of women complaining and talking about the way they were sexually harassed. That they don't have to have the parade of all the allegations that have been made. And it gives, I think it gives the state time to catch a breath and most importantly, try to come up with some plan for getting through the pandemic. You know, through all of this, we've lost sight of the fact that New York has not come back from the pandemic. There's economic problems, there's rent problems. The state has not been able to focus on any of the key problems that is gonna rejuvenate and restore the state and the city. And I think this puts it all away. And if the legislature um, thinks about it for a while, I think that what they're gonna say is, okay, he's, we're done. Let's move on. Let's get behind Kathy Hochul right. and try to give her an opportunity to run the state. And that was going to be my next question. In 14 days, Lieutenant Governor Kathy Hochul steps into this role as the first female governor of the state of New York. Is she ready to battle this pandemic, to step into those big shoes? Before this fall from grace, Cuomo was a sort of a celebrity governor in getting us through the pandemic. Is she ready? Well, I think the big answer is we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> but I also will tell you this, that she hasn't been sitting up in Buffalo and, and counting uh, pennies. She's been going around the state and talking to very important leaders and getting advice. And I think that, th that they've given her some good advice. And I think she knows very well um, the key things that she has to deal with. It's going to be jobs, mm. bringing the state back, dealing with the myriad of problems of tenants, and also dealing with the virus itself, dealing with Delta, dealing with questions about masking. And for parents, the most important thing is going to be how they bring back the schools come September. Masking, remote learning, there's a million things that have to be decided. And Kathy Hochul, 62 years old, long career in politics, first serving as a congressional aide, then serving 14 years on her town's board in upstate New York. She spent years as the Erie County County Clerk as well and became the first Democrat actually to represent her congressional district in four decades. That was back in 2011. 2018, she won that uh, primary election to become the lieutenant governor and uh, won the general there. She's spent a lot of years on the road traveling from and, place to place to meet people through. And point out that she's made it a, um, a hallmark, of you, if you will, of her um, being lieutenant governor to visit all 62 counties. So she's not going to just be the mayor of Buffalo, I mean the governor of Buffalo or the governor of New York City. I think that she's trying to prepare to be the governor of the entire state because the state has different problems in different regions and I think she's well aware of that because she's been to all of the counties. Not mentioned in the AG's bombshell report. Kathy Hochul, and really not considered the inner circle of Cuomo. But you see, that actually helps her because she wasn't in his inner circle. And in fact, I can tell you that when this thing first happened, it, used, it was an interesting thing. In the beginning, um, for the 
last whatever years, the governor would send out her schedule, her schedule himself. Mm -hmm. When this first happened, she started sending out her own schedule, clearly making a, a line of demarcation. There was a big transition at that moment. So we've been, she's been preparing this for months. We want to let you listen in once again. Governor Cuomo announcing that he will resign. Let's let you listen to what the governor had to say just a few moments ago. This is one of the most challenging times for government in a generation. Government really needs to function today. Government needs to perform. It is a matter of life and death government operations. And wasting energy on distractions is the last thing that state government should be doing. And I cannot be the cause of that. New York tough means New York loving. And I love New York. And I love you. And everything I have ever done has been motivated by that love. And I would never want to be unhelpful in any way. And I think that given the circumstances, the best way I can help now is if I step aside and let government get back to governing. And therefore, that's what I'll do. Because I work for you. And doing the right thing is doing the right thing for you. About helping the people of New York. He mentioned his lifetime of public service. My question for you, Marcia, is does his stepping down allow him to ever run for office again versus going through the impeachment process where that would take that option off the table? Could that have been part of the reasoning? Well, I mean, ostensibly he can run for office again because once he was impeached, he would not be able to. But then there's the practical question about whether someone who's gone through this can ever run again and actually be elected. That's a question we don't know. I mean, will he ever try to do it? I don't know. You know, Marcia, second governor to leave office amid a scandal, of Elliot course, Spitzer. Elliot Spitzer coming to mind um, in 2008. And so the state has been through this before. And I should point out that then David Patterson, who was the lieutenant governor, had no warning. Unlike Kathy Hochul, who's been preparing this for several months, and David Patterson, day one, there was a sex scandal. The next day, he resigned, and then yeah. he was the governor. And he jumped into the fray. He handled it. He handled a budget crisis. But then he never ran again after uh, uh, fulfilling That's that right. term. I think it was about 48 hours in between, so there wasn't much time. Here, Kathy Hochul has been preparing. Insiders have said that she is readying herself for this position as governor. And as you said, she has been to every area area of the state to, to prepare for this. But we've been talking about how difficult a time it is as we are still in the middle of COVID. The Delta variant, we're seeing infection rates go up, is a very difficult time. So Kathy Hochul will take us through the end of this term. Is there a chance that she could throw her name in the hat to run in 2022? Who else are you seeing I mean, as a I front ab runner? I absolutely think that Kathy Hochul will try to run and to be a full, uh, to get a full term as governor. But there's so many people who want the job. She's from upstate New York. Most of the voters in New York are from downstate New York. And there's a whole long list of people. It includes Tish James, the attorney general. It includes your favorite mayor, Mayor Bill de Blasio. It includes Jumani Williams, who's been traveling around the state uh, for the last several months trying to get known. And also uh, Tom Swasey, the mm -hmm. uh, congressman from Long Island, um, and Steve Ballone, um, uh, the uh, local executive there. But I also would point out that it's going to be a hotly contested race. There are a number of Republicans who want the job, Congressman Lee Zeldin from Long Island and Andrew Giuliani, who, as you know, is the son of Rudy Giuliani. Well, we are talking about a primary in less than a year of the gubernatorial race, 20, yeah. November 2022. I mean, January, they're going to start campaigning. Sure, we'll start so, hearing it. You know, we're, it's going to be a down and dirty race. Well, what do you think over the last week for, I know you have sources all over the state, frankly, but over the last week, we, you know, he went from, I did not do this, I'm not stepping down, I'm not going to bow to the political pressure. Now, one week later, he's resigned. Now, in that week, we've heard from additional women. We heard the interview with Brittany Camisso. Did any of that play a role, or do you think he just realized that he was backed into a corner? I think that what happened was his lawyers were saying to him over and over and over again, 
you just have to resign. And I think also maybe one of the straws that broke the camel's back was when Melissa De Rosa, his top yeah. aide, decided to say, look, she told him to resign. He didn't resign. I'm out of here. And what I'm told is that she spent most of Sunday, he tried to convince her to stay. And when she said she wasn't staying, I think that also pushed him over the edge. Yeah, he also sense. had this interview with Brittany Camisso this week and uh, talking about groping allegations. And she had been anonymous until this point. And now you see her, you hear her story. Uh, the AG was clear from the beginning she believed her. This could have been a point, too, that pushed him to this point. Well, the, the, you raise another question, and that is whether or not his decision to resign will stop all the four different district attorneys, and then there's one upstate making five, who are investigating him, and whether that will put the kibosh on their investigations as well, or they'll continue. We, of course, know that civil lawsuits uh, will come from this. Once the AG report came out, of course, that was the discussion as to what will happen legally uh, when it comes to Andrew Cuomo. And now, not being governor, we're in a whole different forum. Well, also, Lindsay Boylan, who was the first person to accuse the governor of sexual harassment, has already said that she intends to file a civil damage suit. And you heard Rita Glavin earlier talking about the political motivation, according to her, that Lindsey Boylan had to, to level these claims against the governor, how she was wanting his endorsement, he wouldn't give it, and you heard her reading the text messages, there will be consequences, to something to that effect. I mean, it, it gives you a sense of why the governor is saying some of this is politically motivated. Well, he wanted to have his lawyer make the case before he spoke, that he felt that it was politically motivated so that it gives him a reason for explaining that he didn't think he could beat it because there were so many political forces. And I think also, um, if you listen to Rita Glavin, you also understood that she attacked the prosecutor, June Kim, who did the investigating for the attorney general. And he had a long history of investigating the Cuomo administration in various cases. And I guess he thought that that also made it very difficult for him to come back and fight it. We heard the governor say he wants to let governor, government get back to governing. He's asking for a seamless transition. How seamless can this transition be? You've seen this before uh, from Spitzer to Patterson. What do you think we're going to be seeing in the next few weeks? I, think we're, days see, from I now? think we're going to see a seamless transition. I think the governor is going to, as much as he hates to do this, is probably going to step up to the plate, brief Kathy Hochul the best of his ability. I think the big question is who Kathy Hochul will hire to do some of these jobs or who she will keep. And then he will try to have a seamless transition as um, it moves on. I think for her, for Kathy, she has to decide which commissioner she thinks she should keep. Should she keep, for example, the health commissioner right. who was involved in the nursing home scandal? Should she find a new one? How long will it take to find a new one? Because, you know, there are a lot of questions right now that have to be answered by the health department, including how do you deal with opening schools? And these are decisions that can't be put aside. So maybe there's a deputy or somebody or she keeps him. You know, big big decisions, and I hope she's been thinking about them. This is total speculation, but informed speculation on your part. So that's the transition. What about the next 14 days? Do you expect to hear from the governor over the next 14 days? Are we going to be getting these daily emails updating us on the COVID process that we've had for the last 18 months, or do you think he's going to really I lay think, low? I think the administration will continue to put out its daily COVID briefings to let people know where we are on that. I think he takes COVID very seriously. You heard from his speech. As he ended his speech, he was talking about how New York fought COVID and we should always regard that as a bellwether of how the state has handled things. And I think he's going to continue to do that and he's going to continue to show that he's running the ship of state for the next 14 days. You know, there have been calls for resignation for months now, Marsha. I mean, back in March when the nursing home scandal really came to light. From every level of government, do you believe it took too long for Andrew Cuomo to step down? I think a lot of people think that. I mean, I will say that there was a tweet from Ron Kim, who was one of his first accusers in terms of the nursing home scandal. He lost his uncle mm -hmm. uh, to the disease. And he tweeted today that there's plenty of information to impeach him. We should impeach him now. And I think the calls for his resignation, he, he couldn't beat it. I mean, he, there was nobody who said he should stay. And he lost Carl Hasty. Yeah, that was a big one. Which was a big yeah, one. Yeah. So, so you're talking about the, the infrastructure, sort of the, the, the function behind him. When you look at not only the sexual harassment claims, but the hostile workplace environment accusations, what about 
the infrastructure allowed us to get to this point? And do you think that it will be different under Kathy Hochul? Well, it depends on who she hires. I mean, apparently, if you could believe the reports, uh, the governor liked to hire uh, young attractive women who felt who fit a certain type and I can't imagine that Kathy Hochul will be looking for physical attributes uh, in the people she hires. But I mean do you think that was part of what enabled him to get to this point? We heard specifically M Melissa DeRosa the, the AG mention how she sort of enabled him protected him from these claims. Was that part of the ultimate demise of this governor? Oh of course it was but but you see there were so many things that went on in that office. See, he would say that this this wasn't me hiring attractive women. This was me trying to give women a leg up, mm. me trying to show that I have women in my administration. And, uh, you know, I can tell you that he did have a lot of women in high places. I mean, uh, in his, on the MTA board, in, in his executive offices, in commissioners. So he really did believe in giving women an equal shot. The problem is that the women in his executive offices um, and often, oftentimes fit a certain physical type. And protected him, is what it sounds like, according to the attorney general. Right. Yeah.